Hi, Jai Sankar. Hey. Hi, uh, I'm Damayanti Herat. I'm a senior lecturer attached to the computer chain department. And uh, to start with, I was hoping I can briefly introduce the motivation behind this session to everyone. And then we'll get, uh, get it going. Yeah. yeah, that's the plan. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I think everyone else know each other. So no need to introduce ourselves. Um, yeah, uh, before uh, us, uh, having this session today, actually we have already sent out uh, an email with the event details. And also uh, there we have had a document shared with you all where we explain what the Google Summer of Code is about. Um, personally, I believe it's a, it's a unique opportunity for undergraduate students to uh, contribute, engage, and also uh, earn money by uh, contributing to an open source project. And uh, personally, I myself have benefited from it uh, maybe a decade ago, uh, where I wanted to work with the Sahana Software Foundation. And uh, from that, I got to know a lot of people working in free and open source software uh, domain. And, uh, uh, and also helped me to uh, actually uh, initiate the passion in me for FOSS, free and open source software. And when it comes to Peradenia undergraduates, I think Peradenia has known to be a place promoting free and open source software. And I think we need to, if it is not the case now, we have to uh, initiate it and continue that trend. And uh, so that was the motivation for the uh, to have this session today. And uh, on top of that, actually, we are looking at a deadline that is uh, April 4th. So April 4th is, as per the timeline this year, is the deadline for uh, participants to submit their proposals for the organizations. And uh, mainly our intention is to support you all with that process. Because uh, we, we believe that after it is through, you will be able to take care of yourself. So we would like to help you in the initial process, mainly choosing an organization, developing a proposal, and also being selected to do Google Summer of Code this year. Uh, and uh, this uh, today in this session, our intention is uh, the, the least case, you will all have an organization selected. The best case, you will already maybe engage in a project and ready to submit your proposal. Uh, and uh, to help with that, we have Jaya Sankar Veerasinghe with us today, uh, who has a very impressive uh, profile with uh, Google Summer of Code. So he has been a Google Summer of Code participant in year 2020 with the OpenMRS. And then later he has become a Google Summer of Code mentor for others in year 2022 for OpenMRS. And at the moment he's there as a organization admin as well as a, a project quality lead at OpenMRS, which is an, uh, a very, very well known uh, open source uh, project. Um, so from that, uh, and also the last thing I wanted to thank uh, uh, Pumal, Chatura and Karan who helped me with organizing this event and all one, everyone who was uh, involved from ASUS. So thank you all for that. And with that, I will hand it over to Jai Sankar and everyone to conduct the session. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, thank you for having me today. Um, let me share my screen quickly. Uh, to, to, yeah. I hope you can see my screen. Can someone uh, confirm? Yeah, we can see. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm uh, Jaya Sankar. Um, uh, I'm a tech leader at Open in Maris and also a GSO Academy uh, this year. So I'll um, 
I'll briefly go through this program and like how to uh, write a proposal and stuff. Then uh, we can have a Q&A se session so you can ask questions, right? So, yeah. Uh, so um, I think like you already, um, someone may already know about the program. Um, we can start with the timeline. So open uh, open uh, sorry uh, dg so is kind of a program that uh, promotes like help uh, students to get started with open source uh, so basically what happens is google is sponsoring a set of organizations to like uh, um, have some uh, students around the world to contribute to their project all right so organizations like ca can register with open uh, GSOC, Google, uh, Summer of Code program, and um, then they will like, there's a standard application process for organizations, and they will go through the uh, organizations and uh, maybe like they approve or reject the organizations and they will publish a list, right? So then uh, organizations can have a set of project ideas, and uh, students also can uh, uh, come up with their own idea for the organization and uh, they have to come up with a proposal right so uh, then uh, what uh, uh, then uh, like the organizations will go through your proposals and uh, select uh, one student per a project per project right so uh, usually an organization have uh, around 10 projects uh, per organization they see i think uh, open mris has um, around eight to nine projects. So we, we are selecting one student uh, per project. So uh, then like uh, once you selected, uh, Google announce your names. Uh, it's around, um, uh, I think uh, 27th of April. No, it's, it's on uh, 4th of May this year. And uh, you can start coding with the organization. Like, uh, so you apply for a project, then you can continue working on that project for 12 weeks, right? So the organization is uh, guiding you, they're providing a mentorship for you to, in order to complete this, uh, your project, right? Uh, basically there are some evaluations and uh, you have to go through them, right? So uh, if we, um, if we like, um, go through this timeline, um, yeah. So you can see uh, we are here now. Uh, it's today's uh, 20th of March. So we are on the um, proposal, uh, uh, applicate proposal uh, uh, period of uh, GSOC, right? Uh, you can like uh, the deadline is on 4th. Right, so why do you uh, need to apply for GSOC? So this is and like, um, as uh, Mrs. Damianti explained, uh, so it's kind of a, a good opportunity for students, right? So um, the best thing is like, uh, these are uh, well-established organizations uh, and like they are real world projects, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, many people around the world are using their proje uh, projects and like their products and you, uh, you can like, uh, so you can work on a real world project, right? So usually like you in, in university, you work on assignments, right? So here uh, you can like step up and like work on a real world project with uh, experienced people. Um, so you can collaborate with them. And uh, so it will help you to gain a practical experience uh, in software development. So uh, usually like uh, you work as an, it's something similar to an intern, right? So they will like constantly um, guide you uh, through this program. The, then like uh, when working on, the, uh, on a project, uh, you have to learn maybe like work with new technologies, new tools, maybe like you have to learn new programming languages, right? So it will like help you to become a, uh, become a better developer um, and uh, it like 
then like w- when working on this um you can like uh, uh, i mean like this is uh, open source right so i mean like whatever you do it's open for everyone then it will help you to like build up your portfolio and um, and like showcase your work whenever wherever you go right usually like if you work for a private company uh, in uh, in your internship you can't um, i mean your code is uh, i mean you, your code is not public in most cases right then it's a little bit hard for you to um, showcase what you have done so here the case is different because like this is open source and like it is public then anyone can uh, go through your work right so you can have a good portfolio because of that uh, it will like help you to uh, stand out in the job market right and like um, uh, and like you can build up a network usually like this there are some uh, sri lankan organizations as well on jsoc and like most of the organizations are from other countries right it will help you to um, build your network and work with uh, uh, work with the people around the world right and get the kind of get recommendations from them right so and maybe like in, in some organizations like sponsor you to travel for their uh conferences as well so like it will help you to um work with like and like uh, uh get to know many people around the world and uh, maybe like say at open image there are people who work with google uh, and uh, some other companies like they are contributing to open image but working for other companies so then like it will help you uh to i mean apply for their companies as well like right? you can get a recommendation from them and to help you uh in finding like a job after you graduate so uh, personally like uh, open image is kind of a um, health tech company so i like after i i did gsoc twice actually at open image so in 2020 and 2021 so before i graduate uh, in my fourth year i um, i got an offer from uh, a norwegian health uh, health tech company so like people will like reach to you um, if you i mean work with the gsoc uh, project because like it's like it's a well known fact i mean if you do gsoc then like uh, uh, it's guaranteed that you get a, a good job and uh, finally then like uh, in most cases like you will uh, end up working for that company i mean uh, for that open source organization as well so i'm i'm currently working as a tech lead at open image so like it, so this gsoc uh, helped me to uh, get i mean like work for open image so it's a kind of a nice opportunity that i had in my life it was like a kind of a turn point so and also like uh, when you are working uh, as i said like uh, you will um, receive a mentorship it's a 12 week mentorship uh, program like it, as well so it will help you uh, to learn from them right so uh, most of the case like they are well experienced developers and well experienced with the project so um, you can learn a lot from them in the um it's it's i mean it will help uh, you to for your personal and professional growth uh this is the best part right you can get paid um so i think uh, it will uh, pay for you for for there are like there were uh, several uh, type of projects so i think it will pay uh, you around 1500 usd so it's uh, it's a half a million for 12 weeks so if we uh, if you um um get selected for an advanced project then i think uh, yeah it doubles it's 3000 usd that means uh, 1 million 1 million rupee um for this uh, 12 weeks three months yeah so yeah that's that's the best deal 
so you can get paid right? so it will like help you in uh, maybe like uh, for your studies and whatever so um so then, so uh, i mean like this is a kind of a golden opportunity so don't miss it out so um if we go back to the timeline uh, we are we are here so we are on the submitting project proposals uh, period so it start from today i think uh, you can't uh, get registered yet uh, because like it it's uh, because of our time zone i think uh, it were uh, available after 11:30 pm today uh, so you can um, uh, you have to wait until there to get re- get registered uh, once you i think uh, yeah you have to go to this website some of code a bit dot with google dot com and register there uh, so yeah the registration is not yet open so uh, then like once you register you can go through the organization list for now i have the 2022 uh, organization list so here like you can uh, search by technology and maybe uh, uh, uh say like if i pick java uh, they to list down all the organizations which use uh, java right so uh, there are like i think uh, over i'm sure like previous in, in last uh, year there were around 200 uh, organizations so go you can go through this and like if, if i click one uh, so it will list down all the idealists for this year. So yeah, uh, let me open the idealist of open MRS for this year. Uh, so yeah, usually organizations have their own idealist saying, uh, hey, these are the things that we are looking for. So we have an idea for a print feature. So for our um, uh, for the for our platform, so it, there there will be some brief explanation on what to expect. Uh, expect and there will be a mentor uh, here. Like we have two mentors per project, right? So you can go through these project ideas. You know each organization, and you can pick one uh, based on your interest. So and uh, you can see we have a Puma as a mentor as well. Uh, for for uh, one project at OpenMR, he also did GSOC uh, twice. So yeah, uh, you can go through uh, this uh, uh, idea list and pick one, right? So then uh, you have to like, the best thing is you have to engage with the community because they expect you uh, to be become familiar with the organization, otherwise you can't write a proposal, right? So you have to engage and maybe try to open a PR, like few PRs for them, try to uh, uh, try to uh, review some PRs and learn uh, about their code base and their technologies so that uh, you can come up with a strong proposal, right? So um, usually they have their own discussion forums. Uh, there are these links, uh, uh, for their discussion forums and chats, right? So, uh, let me uh, give uh, an active uh, income for the marriage for B. Um, I share it on the chat. Uh, yeah, you can go to this uh, link and uh, there's a, a GSOC um, channel there, like no matter, like it, it doesn't matter, you you go through, go with another organization, like uh, we usually share, share some, share some uh, resources there, right? Uh, uh, you can do it now. Uh, just go to this link and uh, join this uh, uh, uh chat uh, slack workspace and there's a gsoc channel you can uh, um you can uh, join that channel so we usually share uh proposal templates maybe some some tips on uh, writing a proposal uh, it doesn't matter like 
you can apply for another company, but like you can like ask questions about the program and stuff here, right? So yeah, you can do it now. I can like give you one minute. You can access the link, right? So all you have to do is uh, just uh, visit this link and uh, write down your email. You will receive an uh, invitation. Then like you can post your questions about the program and about like um, maybe eligibility, uh, about uh, rules, and uh, you can get help uh, on writing your proposals and stuff here. Yeah. I think you are familiar with Slack, right? All right. Oh, so I hope um, you join the channel. So yeah, and and there are some. Uh, I mean, like uh, that's where we discuss on our, on other topics as well here, right? You can go through them, like just to, like uh, have a, an overview on how an open source organization uh, operates, and we have. Uh, uh, discourse um, group talk dot open to have uh, discussions. Um, okay, let's go back to the topic, right? So then, like you have to like please go through these uh, pick one organization quickly based on your interest and uh, uh, based on technologies that you already um, uh, familiar with. Then. Um, uh, go through that organization, right? Finally, you can start on writing um, the proposal. So, uh, when it comes to proposal, uh, there are uh, several ways of structuring the proposal, uh, and organization have their own templates uh, in most of the cases, and maybe like uh, they have some set of activities defined uh, for you to do uh, prior applying uh, for GSO. Go through the organization's like um, guidelines. Usually, they have uh, uh, they might have a wiki page on these uh, guidelines. Usually, they have they supposed to have one. So um, go through it and identify what are their expectations, right? So, uh, so at the end of the day, this kind of a PDF document you have to submit on on this within this portal. Um, so you have you can like work with the Google Doc, and you have to um, share that draft link on, on the JSOC dashboard. Um, and you can apply up to three projects, right? Uh, on different organization, maybe like within same organization, yeah, you can apply for different projects, right? In uh, this application, there are like several key elements you uh, generally you can uh, pay attention to. First is, um, so there will be some set of mandatory questions your organization is uh, uh, asking from you, right? It's uh, on, on the proposal template. And um, most of the time it's about you, right? About like your previous experience or maybe like about uh, uh, yourself and where you study and stuff like that, right? In there you can like demonstrate your uh, your maybe your skill set right uh, and uh, projects that you have already done in your university or maybe like uh, out of your university or maybe your other like uh, open source communities right so uh, try to uh, try to have an overview 
on what you have done because like they are trying to pick the best candidate um, out of the applicants right so uh, they in order to stand out uh, from other applicants like you have to um, demonstrate your passion there and and your abilities so they will uh, so that you can like increase uh, your chances of getting selected then we can like uh, structure the proposal. Um, this is like kind of a structuring idea, right? You can have your own structure, but uh, make sure that you have these key elements covered on your proposal. So then you can have the um, requirement um, and the design and the implementation. Requirement is the problem that you're trying to solve, right? This pro project idea is kind of a, like problems that they need to solve from a student, right? So you have to like well identify the requirement, uh, the, the pro problem that you are trying to solve, right? So then uh, you can document it on, um, on this, uh, on, on your proposal, right? So uh, say like you can use, uh, I think you are uh, aware about this requirement elicitation, uh, if not, like it's basically like you can document uh, about your findings, right? You can like observe whatever they have already done. Maybe you can conduct some interviews with your mentors or maybe other stakeholders. You can identify like who are the people going to use this, uh, uh, the, whatever the thing that you are going to build, right? So then you, you can document it. Right, if, when you're like uh, documenting stakeholders, maybe you can use a stakeholder onion diagram and uh, you can come up with your personas and user stories to explain what, what they are uh, about their goals. And you can identify functional requirements and non functional requirements and document them. Right, so then you are like giving. Um, uh, an impression for your mentors or the org admins that you have an idea about what you are trying to do, like what you're trying to solve. Then um, design is the solution that you are trying to provide for to address that problem, right? So you can like uh, come up with uh, maybe wireframes if it is a UI oriented uh, project, or maybe some class diagrams to explain uh, what you are trying to do here right so i mean like uh, this this is how i'm going to solve this problem there will be uh, uh, these components there and each components will do x and y uh, likewise you can like try to explain what you are trying to build right what how what kind of solution that you are going to um, build uh, in order to address this problem right um, feel free to use whatever, like maybe a sketch, a mock-up, whatever, uh, in order to support your uh, explanation there. Then the implementation. Implementation is like how we are going to implement this solution, right? What are the tools that you are going to use? And uh, maybe you can come up with some sort of reasons here, uh, behind your choices, like say like, I'm going to use React for these, uh, uh, this uh, to build this UI because of this reason, that reason, right? You can like come up with your own reasoning and uh, maybe like you can provide some code samples, right? Uh, maybe so provide some uh, uh, um, sample payloads, right? Sample request payloads, right? You can like uh, uh, explain how we are going to build. As part of the implementation, you can come up with the time. Right. So within this 12 weeks, how we are going to divide this work, you can say like within first two weeks, I'm going to come up with this. And within the next two weeks, um, I'm going to deliver this component. Right. So you have like identify some sort of functional requirement there. Right. You can like divide them uh, in uh, to smaller parts uh, and explain your deliverable uh, within those um, uh, weeks. So it will give the impression for uh, people who review um, uh, 
uh, the impression that you have a plan, right? You know what you are going to do and you know how to divide this work and this is doable within this 12 weeks, right? So uh, structure it like that and um, so it will help you uh, to increase chances on getting selected. Uh, let me um, show um, an example um, a proposal, um, this one, yeah. Uh, it's from Piyuma, uh, your friend from uh, your university. I think uh, this one, this was one of the best uh, uh, proposal we received uh, last year. Um, let's go through his proposal quickly. So he, he have explained about himself. Like these questions are like we usually provide uh, on a template, right? It, it depends on your organization. And he have mentioned this at, uh, piece of background and also like his previous open source contributions and uh, his uh, contributions to open MR is like he have listed out all the PRs, like he have a bunch of PRs because he, uh, this is the second time he applied for. Um, otherwise, like you don't have need to like have this much of PRs, but it's something nice to have. So then uh, he have the, come up with a project proposal and kind of introduction and background of the project. And uh, we have done a requirement elicitation, identified stakeholders, and um, uh, he have identified, uh, he came up with some set of personas and user stories, and also an observation on the current implementation, some screenshots from the current implementation, and finally have identified uh, functional requirements and uh, prioritized them. Right? This is Moscow prioritization, you know. Uh, Moscow prioritization is uh, like it's it's uh, uh, M S uh, C and forget about O N W. So it means must have, should have, could have, and will not have. We can like prioritize your uh, requirements uh, using this Moscow prioritization. It's something nice to have, um, and the non-functional requirements. And uh, he have like come up with all the picture and uh, and identify several components and uh, provide some wireframes and mockups for those yeah wireframes for um, those components and finally about uh, how he's going to implement this uh, component wise he yeah, provided some mockups and sample payloads uh, yeah sample payloads here and some examples you can come up with maybe like you can provide some uh, code sample right uh, maybe like proof of concept uh, you can like uh, implement uh, maybe one component one smaller component and like explaining that uh, this can be done like this way maybe and provide some code examples maybe a, a link to a github repository and finally you can provide a timeline detailed timeline on how you are going to uh uh complete the project within these 12 weeks and what are the deliverables on each each period so yeah that's a good uh, uh, propo uh proposal that we received and there are some references as well so yeah uh likewise you can come up with the, your own structure but make sure that you cover these uh, uh key elements on your proposal then um uh, in in uh, when writing a successful application, so go through the organization guidelines and uh, make sure that you make, meet the expectation. And sometimes uh, they uh, expect some uh, PR counts. Maybe like at OpenMRS, we are expecting at least uh, three PRs from you, uh, and. Uh, also, you have to get the one badge, uh, badge at OpenMRS. There's a quiz. There are uh, some sort of stuff that you need to com uh, complete in order to be uneligible. And other organizations may have their own own um, um, activities, maybe guidelines and proposal templates. So we have to go through them carefully and uh, do uh, a good research on uh, whatever the project that you are going to apply for. Otherwise you can't write a proposal, right? 
Uh, so do a research, maybe like you can have uh, some design calls with your mentors and join their weekly calls. Like usually they have um, their uh, weekly calls on each team, right? Uh, they are open for anyone. Like they are not going to ask questions from you and like uh, uh, you are free uh, to join them, right? Anyone can join and uh, maybe you can ask questions and uh, um, clarify uh, anything that you uh, that if there are, if you have doubts or maybe like um, if something is not clear for you right so it will help you um, to identify the requirements as well as uh, uh, the expectations so and uh, when uh, writing the proposal like uh, you when you are explaining about your background like showcase like the uh, uh, say like if you are going to apply for a React project, then you can provide some link uh, to previous work you have done, or maybe like uh, certifications or whatever, like to support that uh, uh, your uh, to uh, um, I mean like to showcase uh, your relevancy to this project, right? And um, also like um, try to. Um, uh, I mean, try to um, demonstrate that your passion on uh, for this project, and uh, I mean, say like uh, why you are interested on this project, and uh, try to demonstrate within your application. Uh, it will like help uh, mentors and admins to um, have an idea about yourself and your intentions, um, and. Uh, Google is not going to review your application. The organizations are the people uh, who is uh, reviewing your application. So uh, try to, like your target audience is uh, your mentors, right? So, and uh, other admins or admins from the organization. And, uh, and uh, like uh, uh, try to uh, write a well-written uh, and clear uh, proposal, right? Uh, Try to uh, maybe like proofread your proposal with someone you know, maybe from your lecturers, and uh, we can help you uh, within this uh, period and uh, um, and the previous uh, applicants from your university. Uh, like try to contact them, and maybe like you can ask questions on key of channel that you have joined, and uh, it will like uh, and try to proofread your application to like. Uh, ensure that uh, it is uh, up to standard, right? And uh, when you're picking, uh, this is very important, when you're picking a project idea, uh, try to pick one with a responsive mentor. Otherwise, like if, if the mentor is not responsive enough, you can't ask questions and stuff, right? So you can like um, go through the discussion forums to check whether they are active on the community or not. Um, try to pick someone like who is uh, very active on the community. So they will like, uh, if you can like easily reach out to them and ask questions, they need to like help you to speed up things. And uh, yeah, proofread your application. So um, those are the things that uh, you have to pay attention when you are writing a successful application. Today is 20th, uh, so you have around uh, two weeks, I think, uh, to uh, complete your application, right? So uh, this is the best time. Right? Uh, the applications um, uh, PS starts today. So go through it. Like, I mean, maybe like uh, you are thinking, I have university work, maybe there will be exams and stuff. So maybe like I can't apply this year. I will like uh, study some technologies and I'm, maybe I'm not, not uh, good enough this year. I can apply on the next year. Please don't do that. Like try to apply. Don't miss this opportunity. Like uh, don't um, uh, wait until uh, you become perfect uh, to apply for this program. Like uh, in order to be per become perfect, you have to like apply <laughs> and like you have to start and uh, i mean like uh, uh, say like i think uh, puma applied uh, to gsoc on his first year um, so i applied on my 
uh, second year. So likewise, I mean, uh, and there are a bunch of people like the, on last year, Open Myers, we had like bunch of first year, like fresh uh, uh, students uh, from university. So like, don't wait until you go for, I um, mean, you, I, I mean, you uh, start with your last year, right? And then it will be hard for you. I mean, like, start now and don't wait until you become perfect. So most of the uh, Google and, and this time, like we, uh, that's a nice thing. So we, this time we specifically received uh, some new guidelines from GSOC saying like we have to uh, give a priority for newcomers. Right. So when we are like uh, creating marketing schemes for this year, like we we uh, consider that one as well. So please apply and don't think like uh, uh, you don't have enough time um, because there's a nice um, nice uh, quote. Um, how do you eat an elephant? One one bite at a time. Right. So try to like divide uh, your work within uh, these uh, two weeks and uh, try to uh, complete smaller piece at a time, right? Then um, eventually you will like uh, 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 end up with a good proposal, right? The hardest thing is getting started and picking an organization. Um, go through it, like set uh, some deadlines for you, for yourself and uh, try to complete, try to achieve them. Like, don't wait until the last minute. Uh, try to do it uh, now itself and um, uh, try to come up with a good proposal, All right? So those are the things I wanted to cover. Maybe there are some some questions or uh, stuff from your end. You can, uh, you can ask them now. Uh, or maybe like uh, you can reach me later. Uh, using my email, uh, or maybe you can ask questions on the Slack channel or try to uh, um, connect me on uh, any social platform, maybe LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. And uh, you can uh, uh, ask your questions as well. But I think it's uh, now it's a good time for you to ask questions because we have around uh, 15 minutes. Uh, over to you. Or maybe like feel free to uh, post your questions on the chat. Uh, we can uh, um, address those questions. No one. Come on. So until they like um, get uh, uh, ready with their questions, maybe like a uh, few months, you can uh, ask some questions. Uh, um, you think uh, that might be helpful for your uh, friend? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. So I think uh, some of you, uh, some of uh, our friends uh, also have like already selected uh, these uh, organizations and projects. I think uh, mm -hmm. they may have some questions. Uh, do we have uh, anyone who already selected the program or project and organization? Can they unmute themselves, uh, Puma? Do they have permission yeah. to unmute? All right, cool. Maybe Puma, you can like, uh, um just ask some questions that you think you, that might help uh your friends um, yeah, Hello, Jason. Uh, oh, yeah we have one 
Reaper. Hi, Hi. Reaper. Uh, so Hello. I have a question. Let's say if we don't have any knowledge, or not any, like we don't have a clear knowledge about the technology stack they are requesting, but we have some understanding. Uh, will mm-hmm. there be? Is there a chance we get selected to the project? Still. Good question. So yeah, I mean, like uh, when there might be some cases that uh, the tech stack is completely new to you, or maybe like you don't have like uh, big. Uh, uh understanding on uh their tech stack but if you like um, come up with the proposal like if you can identify the requirements and uh, provide kind of a pro- uh, um, solution for their requirements to address their requirement then you you have a, a good chance to get selected and this year like google is uh, considering uh prioritizing beginners so they i mean like if you um, prove uh, that you can learn those technologies uh, on the go and uh, share some previous experience that you have, then uh, the chances are high. You don't have to have like extreme uh, understanding of uh, their technology. So if we have a good proposal and like a good solution architecture in the proposal, the chance is high. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because like uh, I can remember in last year as well, there were some good students. Uh, they didn't have uh, so there were some React projects, but they didn't have uh, the in deep um, in depth understanding on React. But they like provided some some like uh, uh, examples on the uh, on JavaScript uh, projects that they have uh, can they have come up with nice proposals. Uh, so we gave the chance for them, and and they they um, they uh, completed uh, uh, their projects was uh, successful as well. Like they were, um, and they they, they completed in time, and um, um, yeah, they, they, those projects were uh, successful. Um, yeah, that's a direct message for me. So does that uh, um, answers your uh, answer your question, Ridma? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. So there's another question on the chat. I only know Python and the basics of C and have taken part uh, in one competitive coding competition. I don't know anything with uh, regards to software architecture, etc. Either do you recommend learning the technologies and apply next year or will I have a chance this year? So yeah, uh, this question is from Samar Zerikar. So yeah, thanks for asking this question. So it's not, uh, again, like something uh, parallel uh, to um, Ritma's question. Uh, so here, uh, I mean, like uh, you don't, when you are documenting uh, your, uh, so you said like you don't have an uh, idea about software architecture, but say like if you can provide some wireframes, maybe like some sketch to um, support your explanation, that's enough, right? You don't have to like have standard uh, um, diagrams and stuff. Like they don't have to be like uh, those uh, kind of diagrams, but if it is simple enough to uh, understand uh, someone who is reading your proposal, then that's enough, right? So, uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, so don't wait until uh, the, uh, you learn those uh, software architecture stuff, right? Um, write something. And even like uh, writing this proposal itself is a kind of a good uh, learning experience for you. You may not get selected, but at the end of the day, you will like uh, learn to, um, do proper requirement invitation and talk with some people and gain some experience, like uh, maybe um, uh, to learn how to go through a code base, right? So that by itself, like uh, it's a good opportunity for you. So don't uh, uh, don't uh, just uh, avoid applying because of that, right? Just apply, just try to write something. Uh, so you will like, learn a bunch of things within these two weeks, right? And remember, other applicants are also people from uh, like uh, 
students from other universities, right? They are also new to these technologies and uh, uh, new to these uh, documentation stuff, requirement gathering stuff. So it's like uh, everyone around you is like uh, uh, most cases. So don't be discouraged. Like apply. Uh, you know, sometimes we. Uh, if like uh, say like there are two uh, good applicants for same project we are um, assigning them for uh, other projects like we can't have uh, two people in the same one right so what we do is like we just discuss with those mentees if they like if they are passionate enough like if they are the if they demonstrated that they they are like uh, so interested in in, in our organization and they have like uh provided some details on their pro proposal then like we assign them for other projects for other easy projects maybe uh ease of project so there are chances chance, so apply that's the most important thing does that uh, answers your question yeah. welcome <laughs> Mm, anyone else? Uh, yeah, another question. Uh, uh, what if uh, some of uh, some some of us have exams or any uh, assignments during the coding period during evaluation? That's so. good. Yeah, that's a good question. I uh, actually I forgot to mention that. So when you are having uh, exams or maybe you have to travel, you can uh, just discuss with your mentor, right? And uh, you can adjust your evalu uh, evaluations and maybe say like you need to take a leave for one week or maybe two weeks. You can adjust it. And also Google, um, uh, 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 Google have an option to extend your um project by another four weeks i think so if you have exams and stuff then uh, you can discuss with your mentor and we are helping students to because we know like we we know that uh, um, um people uh, students from universities have these assignments exams and stuff so we are supporting um, as much as we uh, can uh, uh, within this uh, 12 week of period and even we can extend it there were some cases in uh, last year as well we, we extended some projects because they they had some difficulties so yeah that's totally fine any other Until someone asks a question, I can um, I'll mention another thing. Uh, the eligibility criteria is um, uh, you can't do GSOP more than twice, right? And um, there are some countries that the uh, GSOP is not supported, but fortunately, Sri Lanka is not on that list, so um, you can apply. and. Um, Previously, you have to be a, a university. To provide your ID and stuff, but this year, a uh, question from Harry. If we get selected to a project, how long do we have to work per day in a project usually? Um, that depends on the project and the... Um, a difficulty level of the project but uh, i might say you you don't have to work uh, every day right you can like even you can maybe you if you have lectures and stuff on your weekdays you can work on weekends right so that's how i did uh, on when i'm doing um, the second time uh, i was working at the same time so i did the coding only on weekends so 
uh, and you can discuss with your mentor and manage it. So, yeah. So the answer to your question that depends on the question, uh, the uh, project you are working on. But um, um, you should, I would say, maybe two hours per day, or maybe the uh, one one entire day on your weekend. That might help. Does that answer your question, Harry? Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, um, We have three more minutes. Um, maybe you can uh, have one more question. Hi, uh, Jaisang, I have one question. Is it always yeah. about uh, coding or is there any other contributions that these organizations are looking for? Um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I mean, uh, when, um, Previously, uh, there there were some organizations uh, uh, who had uh, documentation uh, uh, tasks as well. But uh, recently, Google um, uh, came up with another program in G Sort uh, Google Summer of Documentation. So most of the time, documentation stuff goes to uh, that program. So and Google now requires uh, coding projects. Um, so yeah, most of the time they will be like coding projects because uh, um, we have to provide uh, uh, on evaluations. We have to like the students have to provide uh, their work. So yeah, uh, there will be. I mean, there might be some easy projects which require less coding work. Right. Right. Thank you. Welcome. I think, uh, yeah, it's uh, six o'clock. Uh, we can uh, wind up the session. But uh, if you have questions, I saw that um, with that email, there's a uh, Google uh, mailing group uh, of uh, uh, the university, uh, which your uh, previous um, uh, Google applicants has uh, used. So yeah, maybe like uh, you can ask questions. I think I can also join that uh, if, uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe I also can help you on reviewing a PR um, uh, or else uh, you can post your questions on OpenMS DSOC channel. Um, we are happy to help you. So yeah, thank you very much for having me today um, to conduct this session. Uh, thank you, Jason, because uh, uh, this will help us to motivate us to participate in the GSOC. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we are new to GSOC. And, uh, this introduction is more help to how to contribute the project and how to, how we are uh, we are uh, we we don't familiar with the how to select the project. Uh, this session is very useful to how to be how we can select the project and how to write a proposal. Uh, you uh, you will explain very clearly to us. Thank you, thank you, Jason, Veera Singh, and also thank you for everyone who joined this session. Thank you. Thank you so much for delivering the session today. I think it was very well uh, informative and will be helpful for everyone. Thank you, Jaisan, and we'll keep in touch. Bye. Welcome. Yeah, sure. Bye bye. And, and, so this, and also, we send a feedback form. Uh, please. Uh, uh, please uh, fill the feedback form. It will help us to motivate to uh, uh, do another sessions for us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.